him taking away because he's going to drive it out. So, Father, I thank you that you're here with us. Thank you for showing up like you always do here. Father, we all came here for something on our heart, something in our mind that we're struggling with, maybe an illness, maybe some thought problems, maybe some fear, some doubt, some unbelief. We're asking you to come and set us free tonight. We ask to all be forever changed. And when we leave here, we're completely different. We receive you. We thank you for coming and healing and delivering us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Testing, testing, we are live. <sighs> Glad everybody came. Good to see you. You don't learn deliverance from YouTube videos. You can learn about deliverance on YouTube videos. You can get started. You really learn it casting out demons. And the further you go along, the more revelation you have of how smart the devil is. The devil's not into just causing you a crappy life, feeling bad about yourself, making you feel ugly, worthless, making you feel neglected and rejected. He'll bring the torment to you, but he's such a masterful deceiver that he pumps a lot of people up. And tells them how great they are. He's a masterful deceiver. He's able to put you in these categories. When you begin to fall into categories, he can sway the whole world. He's the wicked one that sways the whole world. That's some power. If you don't have any sense of, I, I don't respect snakes. I don't respect diamond heads. But when I was riding the other day, it was early in the morning at 7. All of a sudden, oh, my goodness, it was a, the head on that thing was this big. I threw my legs up in the air, rolled right over him. I said, this thing bites me. I'm going to be in real trouble five miles off the road and 20 miles from the hospital. You, you, you better have a little sense about the devil because he will bring something to you that you don't want nothing to do with. And how's he going to get in? He's going to get in with sin. Oh, and here's the reality. You were born with a sin nature. You sin with efficiency. You sin with ease. You sin by your, your nature as someone cursed, as sin comes in the world through one man, Adam, and then sin reigns in all men. And the minute you're born again and you have an encounter with Jesus Christ, it says, you're regenerated from above. Well, regenerated from above is you get a new nature, one that can now submit to God and obey God. But if you get born again and you refuse to submit God and you refuse to obey God, you get in trouble and you get sick. These devils will, will trick you like you can't believe. Demons can perform fake miracles. One happened to me and I thought it was God. It was at the house of God. And the guy was really sick with kundalini, and I didn't know it. I didn't know kundalini. Kundalini comes from the Hindu religion, and it mimics the Holy Spirit. In order for these people to serve these gods and, and obey these gods, they mimic miracles like God. And so I go, to, I'm in a hard time, and it's a setup my father-in-law calls me. It's at his church. He says, there's a guy on fire. He's a construction guy. You guys have a lot in common. You're about the same age. Hey, I think you should be here. I'm like, yeah, it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll show up Saturday night, maybe Sunday. Got to be respectful to the father-in-law. Then my buddy comes. He's sicker than a dog. He had the second largest plumbing company in the state of Arizona, and he had went bankrupt he sold his whole fleet of cars They were parked in my property, sold everything, and he was fixing air conditioners. And he goes, I don't know why I'm here, 
but God told me to come over here and tell you you're supposed to be somewhere today. And I said, oh, man, I know where it is. I'm supposed to be at this thing with my father-in-law. So this guy, he gets going, and, and uh, it, it, the devil was working. All of a sudden, he, he was kind of a country bumpkin guy. He's like, yoo-hoo, and wee And I'm like, bro, this is the church. You think we don't know these Bible verses? We know these. And I was perplexed by his enthusiasm. But then a thought came into my head. Hey, this guy believes these miracles are going to happen. Hey, let's take a look. Let's, let's see what he can do. Let's see what kind of miracles happen. And I think, hey, God's stirring me up a little bit. Well, some people claim they got healed. Some things were happening. So I call my buddy. He, he's sicker and I'll get out. And I say, hey, man, come to this service this afternoon. Come with me, man. You ain't been working. This is in the heart of recession. In Arizona, this market was pillaged in 2008. He says, I got nothing to do. I'll try it. He comes down. And he says, if you need to be healed, come forward. I had osteoarthritis, bone-on-bone -bone degeneration in my knee. And it was so bad, I was in my 30s, I said, don't do anything harsh on your knee. You're going to have to have a brand new knee, but your insurance won't cover it until you're in your 40s, so take it easy. So he's calling forward to people who are, need to be healed. And he lays hands on me. He says, test your knee out. You know, so I'm bending down a little bit and... You know, he goes, how's it feel? I said, it feels good. And he's like, woohoo. And I'm like, hey, take it easy, bro. I got good days and bad days. I got good moments and bad moments. That's a little premature celebration, but I'm kind of going with it, saying, hey, let's just be positive here. I've been negative for so long, and the economy's been bad. Let's take the positive. And I walk outside. This devil's so smart, he's mimicking the Holy Spirit. And he says, run up that mountain. And I said, well, I don't want to wreck a good thing. You know, this thing's feeling good. And I said, hey, man, take my keys. I'm going to run up this mountain. And I ran up that mountain. My buddy even said it was like the devil. Hey, what about your knee? And I ran up, and my knee was healed for three months. A lot of things were funny with this guy. He goes, the Hispanic ladies were there. This girl's country bumpkin wife from Pennsylvania up in the mountains and she thinks she's praying in tongues, and she's speaking numbers in Spanish. And all the girls came to my mother-in-law and said, what was she doing? She thought that was tongues. She was praying in numbers. Uno, dos, dos, tres, seis, We speak Spanish. What is this? That's not tongues. Red flag. My father-in-law thought he was healed. Back on insulin. It took a few months for that thing, but what happened? The voice came in my head when he put his hands on me. Things got worse because now the knees having more and more problems. I testified that God healed my knees. I was so excited. I went around and I preached to like 26 people, highways, byways, and pe homeless people, business people. I mean, I'm, I'm getting busy with the, with the ministry. I'm thinking, I, okay, it's time to break out of this. And more hell comes to breakfast. It's not till I learn about deliverance. And I learn about deliverance. As I'm going through deliverance, demons are coming out of my body. But every time the demons are coming out of my body, my knee is getting looser and looser. My wife thinks I'm a little odd. Instead of going back and watching Orange County Choppers and some biker build-off show, I'm back praying for my knee, and every night I feel a little better. So I'm a few months into it, and he, the guy's coming to town. And I told Mike Smith, I said, Mike, you got to come down and you got to see this guy. He got my knee healed. I thought I just lost my healing because I didn't have faith, because I was grumbling, I was complaining. It got stole, which does happen sometimes. And so this guy comes. This is the biggest freak show you ever heard. He breaks off the church in which he was an evangelist at. They tried to get me. He kept saying, you're so anointed. You're so anointed. I see God's anointing on you. You are an anointed man of God. And then he said to his wife, don't you see the anointing on him, honey? I need your number. But I didn't call him. I, I, I was working through my issues. And uh, he got someone else. And they broke away from the church and they started their own church. And they were preaching at the church that broke off from my father-in-law's church, the time of my re the revival where I was at. And I go over there and it is a freak show some of you will not believe how freaky this is. And it's 100% exactly as it went down. There's a lady that has mental illness. She said, I just got out of, when you carry the anointing, you, the demons come after you. 
And I almost lost my mind. Her hair is falling out of her head. She's only in her 40s, maybe early 50s. And she goes, we want to anoint you to the pastor. I'm not kidding. She puts hands on him, and the Spirit is moving him and contorting him, and they're clapping for this Spirit to come and kundalini wrap around his sacrum and his spine. They don't know what's happening. Mike is freaked out. The guy now, the main preacher starts preaching some message not much to it and then they line up at the altar call he drops every one of them and every one of them made a different animal sound mike is at the back of the chair like ready to leave if the guys he said if the guy was coming for me and wanted to pray or prophesy for me i was out the door i was not going to listen to it i wasn't going to have him come nowhere near me he said it was the most powerful demonic anointing he had ever witnessed in his life this devil is a masterful deceiver. And when you sin, you set yourself up for destruction. Now, we all sin. We ha I got things that I should be doing that I don't do. Anything I don't do by faith is sin. We're all working out our salvation with fear and trembling. We're all covered by grace and mercy and kindness and generosity to the Father. He's so kind, he didn't leave me with that spirit that was trying to attack me. After nine years of ministry, he wanted in on it. He wanted me laying hands on people. YouTube is riddled full of people that are getting people sick. A guy came in Tuesday. Good guy. He loves the Lord. He just got born again later in life. But I know the look. He's got the glassy-eyed look. And he's got that smile. Ready to tackle the world. But it's not the right smile. I've seen it before. And he's got faith. He waited for hours for me to see him. Something got messed up in the schedule. We're starting to go through it. I don't look at his list because I had been talking to him back and forth over the five hours he was waiting as I'd go out and take breaks, get the other client. So I go and I start talking with him, and I don't look down at the sheet at the bottom. I see the normal run-of-the-mill stuff that men deal with. He's telling me his problem, but I don't see the Satanism and the witchcraft. It, I was blinded to it. We begin to rebuke the spirits. He's got a humble heart. He's got a ready heart. He's ready to get delivered, and we're going for it. I can see the spirits on him, and he's wrestling, and it's resisting. And it, I, I know it's something in there, so I'm fighting. I'm being consistent. I'm charging it in the name of Jesus. I'm telling it to come out, and the thing can't take it and pops. He said, he sold his soul to me. My name is this. It was on this date. I told him to do all these things over the years, and he does all these things. He's mine. I said, well, I don't talk to demons, so you go ahead and go dormant here, and I want to talk to the man. And I began to talk to him again. I said, is this stuff true? He said, yeah, but I repented of all this stuff. I said, yeah, but he didn't get kicked out. It's one thing to repent of something, but when you've been sinning, you've been grumbling, you've been complaining, that's a common offense in humanity, but with God, it'll send out vipers, and you will die in the wilderness, and you'll never fulfill your calling. When you have poor self-worth and low self-esteem, what you're doing is believing the lie from Satan and saying, I don't feel what God says about me, so I'm going to base what I feel off what I think and what I'm dealing with at the time, and I'm going to null and void the scriptures over my life. You're fulfilling the prophecy of Satan. He told you to believe that lie. You believe that lie. That lie becomes your reality. When you're living sexually immoral, it says you won't inherit the kingdom of God. That's any sex outside of wedlock is sexually immoral. The Bible says the sexually immoral will not inherit the kingdom of God. But you've got people who are sexually immoral all the time that go around and preach. And I'm like, look, man, I think it's okay to be preaching, but I would deal with myself and practice what you preach before I'd worry about getting out there on the streets saving souls and having this great desperation. In my mind, I think you got something in you because you gave place to the devil, and that devil wants you preaching just enough so someone will trust you, so you'll put your hands on them, and that will transfer onto that person. And therefore, you get people sick more than you get people saved. And everybody thinks the devil's just some dummy up in the sky. Well, where, where, where you been, Satan? Well, I've been going to and fro the earth looking for souls to devour. 
uh, hello, that was thousands of years ago. You get a little smarter over thousands of years. You get a little more stronger as the demons are released, as the people want sin and want evil. I, transgenders, when I was growing up, was a dude that my, I was like, oh, dude, you're giving people the willies, bro. You know, dude, most of the time they wouldn't even shave their legs. They're just like, hey, I'm going to go out and rock this dress and, and just I'm going to just do what I do. And people were again. Now it's like these people really transitioning. I just saw it at Quick Trip. And I'm like, bro, I don't think your face is going to make a good female face. You don't quite got the physique for the transition. This is not going to go well for anybody. What's happening? Things are being released right now in the last days. Anybody into mathematics? I never passed a math class in my life. I cheated them all, but I'm excellent at math because math had to do with my money, so I was real good at math because I was about my money for years. Have you ever done the math? Have you, you're starting to see that you can't trust the media. Correct? They told you one thing. They told you to do this, and then you start thinking, man, they played me. One wasn't enough. Give me two. One wasn't enough. Give me three. Come lock yourself down for this amount of time. No, we'll take forever. You still can't go into the jails and preach after three years and two months. Nobody's in there able to preach. You ever did the math on those? 7.8 billion people on earth. Seven po people don't understand the number billion. Number million is a pretty easy number. You're, you're going to line up money from here to Tempe. You start talking about a billion and you're wrapping dollars around the world. 7.8 billion times three. They, they made 20-some billion of those things. Well, if you do the math, if you had three companies that made them and you had 10 production plants, it would take you 10 years to make that many, making one per second. So what does that tell you? Those were around long before they started talking about it. Those were around for years. People got simple-minded. Wait, this is just a mess with the election. No, this was meant to mess with you and for you to go bye-bye. Yeah, well, well, let me tell you, you can get delivered from it. Don't have fear, but you're going to have to repent because you trusted man. And one of the ways you get a curse in the Bible is cursed is the man who trusts in man. So when you're a Christian, there's not only a reboot in the way you act and the way you talk and the way you live your life, but there's a reboot in the way you make your decisions. And when you begin to trust in yourself, it says man's heart is deceitfully wicked and no man can trust it. He says you can't trust in man. He says when the Holy Spirit comes... He's the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth will lead you and guide you in all things. He will teach you and remind you of everything he spoke. He will comfort you in your tribulations and trials. He will lead you to the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Oh, there's power in the Holy Spirit. But if fear comes in, fear is a spirit. And the minute fear begins to operate in someone, it begins to blind you from the things that you're thinking and the things that you're doing and the things that you're wanting. Fear is a spirit. Spirit's blind. We know Satan blinds the minds of those that believe not. One of the ways he blinds the minds of someone that doesn't believe is through spirits. I'm going to show you some scriptures. You've read them all, but Sometimes we, we overlook some things, and it says this in, uh, in the Gospels. It said Judas made a deal. He made a deal to sell Jesus out for 30 shekels of silver. That was the price of a slave. They weren't going through inflation. The money wasn't this level, and 32 the next six months. No, the money stayed the same because it was based off metals, silver and gold. Silver and gold don't change. That's why gold went up to $2,036 an ounce for a little coin because the dollar's being devalued. The country is being broken by open borders for the whole world. 
I'm not against these people. I love these people. I got to take advantage of them. I hope they come in here. But it's going to break the system. It's the way all systems break. And then the dollars that are based off whatever they're based off, when it's not silver and gold, they all implode. Every one they're called fiat currencies, they all implode. So you're living in a delusion to think you're in the safest, most comfortable place that the devil can't get you, and you're a Christian, and, and I got everything I need. No, you'll be surprised in the way things are going to change in your lifetime, especially you are young. It is ramping it up, and it's like this, and it ain't about to slow down. Because what? The delusions that come upon people. And then once he strikes you with fear, well, fear taxes you. You can't sleep with fear. Negative thoughts just run over and over and over again. So what you have to do as a coping mechanism is begin to block it all out. And that's exactly what he wants you to do. Block everything out. Well, you've got to look at the scriptures. And it says that Jesus was going to be sold out by Judas for 30 shekels of silver. He had some remorse, so what he thought was, Jesus is going to get out of it like he always gets out of it. They're always looking to get him, and he'll walk right through the crowd, and nobody can lay a hand on him. You know, every time I take money out of this money bag, because he was in charge of the treasury, he said, no one calls me out on it. There's so much. It's always coming, everything we need. It's like I'm dipping into the endless money bag. There's no repercussions, and he was growing bolder. And what was happening? God was giving him time to change. He kept showing him mercy. He kept showing him the miracles. He kept showing him the deliverance power as all these people were getting set free from spirits. But somehow the devil had blinded him because thieving will blind you. Lying will blind you. Any sin will blind you. And it says that he sells him out and Jesus calls him out. He says, one of you is going to betray me. But what one of the man in whom does this? And everyone's like, whoa, all 12, what, 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 is it I? Is it I? He said, it's the one that dips his bread into this oil, this cup. And his hand must automatically mint. He should have caught that manifestation. And he does exactly what Jesus warned him not to do. Jesus, everything Jesus said, it came to pass. He cursed the fig tree, it withered up and died. He spoke to the storm, and the storm ceased. He laid hands on every sick body, and no matter what level the disease was, they were instantly cured. They were blind, they got 20-20 vision. So he should have realized when the hand manifested to fulfill exactly what Jesus said, what Jesus says is going to come to pass. And he goes and he betrays him. But he didn't understand what was about to happen. And now Jesus is crucified. And he sees him hanging on a tree. And he dies. And all of a sudden, the guilt and the remorse come to Judas. But Satan has blinded his mind now. Now he wants to do the right thing. He sees his sin. It cost him the, the life of his, his master and his Lord. He's dead. And he said, he went to the Jews, he said, I betrayed innocent blood. I did, I did wrong. And he throws the money at them. And they said, hey, we got nothing to do. That's blood money. No, we don't put that in the treasury. You take that back. Don't put that on us. That was the deal you made. And he leaves and he doesn't repent to God. He only repented to man. He was blinded. Repenting to man is decent, but first it's got to be repentance to God. And he's blinded, and he goes out, and the devil says, your life is over. He makes a noose, he ties it on a tree, and he jumps off and hangs himself. Then it says something interesting. He said, I never, I thought Mike had a good revelation, I'm going to use it. It says all his guts were burst out. Mike's, a, Mike's thing, it's his theory, nobody knows, it's not clear, it's just his guts are all out. It was a question to me. He thinks that Satan picked him up and slammed him because Satan lost his kingdom. He had a kingdom on this earth. He had everybody sin, and therefore, since they were all sin, and the wages of sin is death, he had the legal right to take them to hell. And he got pissed when he was duped, when he crucified the sinless son of God. It was the beautiful exchange where the innocent was crucified for the guilty who died in our stead. It was a vicious scourging of the back down to the bones and the blood. They rammed his head with a crown of thorns. And then they took this reed and they kept hitting him in the head with it so it would pierce his brow. That's for everybody dealing with issues with their mind and mental illness. 
That's why he took that crown of thorns. That's why he took that punishment on his back and on his body. He was crucified for the sins of the world. And the minute you get that revelation, it's the greatest revelation one can ever have because you didn't come to that revelation. That was revelation from the Father to you personally. It says that no one can say that Jesus Christ is the Lord unless the Father revealed the Son. He reveals eternal life. You would never believe it. You would have thought you came from a monkey that was formerly mucus that became a tadpole. You, you, you would have thought you, your ancestors lived in a cave. But no, the revelation of Jesus Christ came from the Father that you were made in the image of God. And because of the sin of Adam, sin came into the world and reigned in all men. And Jesus Christ came to set at liberty those who were oppressed of the devil. He came to translate you from the kingdom of darkness over to the kingdom of his, of his son. But if you refuse it, you always have free will. Most Christians refuse it. They want the salvation because that was already done for you. He did everything that you couldn't do for yourself. But the reality is you were on the auction block of slavery and your destination was hell. He intercepts you and says, I will take this one. I will take this one. And then he says, look, now you have a a new opportunity. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll finish every good work that I began in you. It says in the scripture that no principality, no power, no scheme of hell, no plan of man, no angel, nor demon can ever, ever separate you from the love of God. But what's not on there? Yourself. As a man thinketh, so is he. So he attacks the mind. So many people are saying, why, why is this happening to me? I had people say, why did God put this porn on me? Why did he do that? I said, well, God did not do that. What scripture are you basing that off of? Oh, and then you'll see people so affected with the devil. They say, well, I'm broke and I have no money and I can't pay my bills, but this is just my, this is just my call from God. This is just my test from God. I said, no, that's a poverty spirit. God said he wants you to prosper and be in good health. Prosper is being able to pay your bills. Your prosperity is that you would be able to help somebody who has a need because your hands have been able to bless and make increase. And therefore, from that increase, you can help somebody else being the body of Christ with the hands and the feet of God. God said if someone is naked and destitute without clothing and food, you clothe them. You feed them. In order to do that, you got to have some clothes and some food. You can't do that when you're broke. But they believe it came from God. People are sick. And the devil will say, it will get them to believe, and their doctrines will get them to believe that the devil that has nothing to do with their sickness. They, they, they believe, oh, uh, it's like Paul, the thorn in the flesh. Yeah, I, I'm just a, a martyr for God. I was like, no, hold on. Don't compare yourself to Paul. You have not been bitten by vipers, shipwrecked numerous times, imprisoned and flogged and beaten with rods and whipped. You have not been stoned to death. You have not been let out of the city in a basket. You have not been to the third level of, of heaven. You are not the chief apostle to the Gentiles. You are not a Pharisee amongst Pharisees. You are a rookie Christian. God is not throwing sickness on you. And if you look at Paul's thorn in his flesh, it said an messenger of Satan was sent to buffet him, to try to hold him back, to try to hold the message back. But Paul kept pressing on. And God said, hey, he said, take it from me. He says, uh, I kept going. He said, my grace is sufficient. My grace is, will abound through your suffering. What was he saying? If you keep going, you'll see the power of God. If you keep going, I'll teach you the authority. And that thing wasn't talked about when he's landing on the island and, and he's preaching to the island and he's on his way to testify to Jerusalem. That thing wasn't recorded being in his flesh at that point. He had got rid of it. You need to get rid of sickness. He doesn't want you sick. He doesn't want you financially busted. He doesn't want you mentally ill. He doesn't want you to be a sexual pervert. He doesn't want you to be greedy. He doesn't want you to be alone. He doesn't want you being offended and angry at everybody. He wants you to have peace. He's the prince of peace. He knows all about peace. That's the way he's always been, and he will show you the ways of peace. But you've got to follow him, and you can't follow him for a few hours and follow sin for a few hours. The Bible says you can't serve two masters. You'll end up hating one, loving the other. He'll twist it completely over. Why? Because you are a slave into the one that you yield yourself to. You give it power. It comes in and it gets stronger. I met a bunch of people. I thought, well, man, that's a pretty good dude. 
And he's not sleeping around. I had friends that had five girlfriends at one time. I, I had a friend when internet dating came around. I used to work with him. He said, man, I need to hire a secretary, man. It's so hard because I got to go through all this chit-chat with all these women before I can actually get a gate, get date. And I got to weed out the ones that it's a waste of time. I'm thinking about hiring a secretary and training her how to do this thing. So when I looked at a few guys who only had sex with one or two girls in college, I thought, man, they should be blessed by now. No. Nope. They're like everybody else, two or three divorces, kids crazy, fighting into some neck deep sin. Why? Because they let it in too. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. The, the master strategy of the enemy is get you to compare yourself with other humans. If you compare yourself with other humans, you can find a group of humans that are living pretty sick and twisted so you can feel pretty good about yourself. I used to be a ticket broker or a ticket scalper. We used to sell everything to the brokers at the big events. And there was a guy out of New York. He was notorious. He's an Italian guy. His name was Knockout Pete. Not only did he knock out other scalpers, he knocked out cops. This guy was crazy. And, uh, and everyone said, man, dude, when you bump into him, it's going to be a big deal. You being an ex-college football player, and at that time I was big, and he says, dude, he, he, he's got to confront anything that he can perceive as threatening. And uh, so I was like, oh, man, my one buddy had got robbed by him, who was a pretty respected dude in the business, was no pushover. And, uh, and I was, was, sure enough, I see the guy I'm in Pittsburgh. And we're working the Super Bowl, so you're picking up the seats. It was when the Super Bowl was at Sun Devil Stadium. So you got to go to the whole city to get the tickets, buying them from somebody or buying them from the players, somebody that doesn't want to buy airfare and hotel and all those things. And I bump into him. But I saw him from a distance, and I prayed. I said, Lord, give me some peace with this guy. And I say all that to say that because he came up to me, and he says, hey, man, I heard you're a born-again Christian. I said, oh, man, he's going to use that angle on me. The Christian's got to turn the... I was like, uh-oh. Now, what's... He goes, man, you think there's any hope for me? I'm messed up. How he got into tickets is he used to be a collection agent for a bookie. He went over to go beat some guy down and get the money. The guy was a ticket broker, and he says, hey, I'll tell you what. I'll pay you the money. I'll pay you double if you just stand by the subway and you keep all these scalper gangs away from me in New York City, the Manhattan, uh, Madison Square Garden. And you let me sell all these tickets? He said, I'll give you double. Pretty soon, the guy took over the ticket industry. So he comes up to me. He said, I heard you're a born-again Christian. And I'm like, oh, where's, where's this going to go? And he says, hey, man, you think there's any hope for me? He said, I've never raped any women, and I've never messed with any kids. But everything else, I've done it. You think I could be saved? I was like, whew, all right, no, no beef, no fighting today. I got tens of thousands in my pocket. That's not a good position to be fighting and I said, uh, I said, absolutely, you can be saved. Absolutely, every sin is forgivable. God is the God of all mercy. God is the God of all truth. And if you'll see him for who he is, the way, the truth, and the life, he said, he said he will set you free, and he'll actually make you a new creature in Christ. Well, the devil didn't like that, so he ran over and saw some other guys that had not paid the fee to scalp there, ran over and extorted them for a few hundred bucks. That was my only interaction with him, but that's somebody who compared himself with other people. To what? To justify what you're doing. Oh, no, 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 no. Not as a born-again Christian who has the Holy Spirit. There is no justification for sin. We struggle with sin. We got to overcome our, our, our struggles. We got to come, overcome the things that were wired into our mind. We were hardwired to take an offense or to be selfish or to be greedy. We live the life, many of us, 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years often, before you even get born again. And Christ has to come in and make all things new. But what happens if you don't sit at the feet of the master, if you don't get yourself in a position for him to shape and mold you, that certain area which is not surrendered to God, Satan exploits it. I didn't want to submit to God in my money because I've always been good at making money all my life. I've been making money since I was 14 when kids in the 80s didn't have 20 bucks. I had all kinds of money. I started scalping the Huskers. I learned how to buy and sell motorcycles. I, at 14, I got a brand new Suzuki RM80 right out of Dormer Suzuki. Had it delivered right in front. 
Kids drove by on the school bus. They all stopped. That's your bike. I was in hog heaven. I, I, was, I trusted in myself when I became a, a Christian. I said, well, I know how to make money. I don't need God's help here. And the devil said, oh, I got this area. The first business I get in, God gives me warnings. Don't go partners. It was with two ex-players that I played ball with. And they used to argue that there was no God. And I'd, I'd try to convince them. I thought I intellectually could lead them to Christ. I said, look at this hand, man. Come on, man, the way these fingers bend. Come on, the way I got a fingernail to protect my, the, the tip of my finger. The way the wrist moves, the efficiency, the mechanics of this hand. You believe this came from mucus? Come on. But I didn't understand the spirit world. That everything from God is spiritually discerned. They didn't want to submit to God because deep down they knew they'd have to change. And at that time, they had no interest in changing. So no matter what you told them, no matter what scriptures, and God said, do not partner with these men. Oh, it went bad. They were skimming money off the top. I told you I was always excellent with numbers. I could do numbers to say when I went out on the job, we made this much. When you guys do go out on the job, the first day you make this much, and then it progressively gets lower and lower as the days go on. I'm not dumb. I understand how much the business makes with side work and new construction. We were a cleanup and removal business. That business fails, loses 15, 20,000. The second business, I don't want to listen again. God keeps sending my wife. I don't think this is going to go well. I got a bad feeling about this. I said, honey, if I want to get into early childhood development and teaching kids, I'm gonna, you're to be the first one I ask. If I want to know anything about waiting tables, you're the best. I'm going to come and ask you. But since this is business and I own businesses and you've never had a business, I got this. And it happened exactly like the Lord told her it was going to happen. I failed. 50,000. Oh, you don't listen there? It went tenfold worse than that before I finally surrendered and went through deliverance. And I realized that if you don't submit any area of your life, Satan's going to get in there by your rebellion. If you won't let God in somewhere, that's rebellion. He has to be the Lord of all. If he's not the Lord of all, then you're in control of how God can move in your life, and you're going to suffer the consequences from it. It's not my opinion. It's my experience, and it's right there in the scriptures. I'm just reminding you, he can blind you. Do you know in the book of Revelations, you know what the number one category is of the people that are going to hell? It's not murderers. It's not the rapist. It's not the idol makers. The number one on the list is the cowardice. That's the number one list of people who are going to be thrown into the lake of fire. What would make you a coward? Well, a, a coward would be somebody who won't put up a fight when you can win. I had a buddy like that. He played for the Cardinals. He played for ASU. I mean, he was, when you've seen him, you knew him walking. Like, dude, that dude's going to the NFL, and we're not. He had the it factor genetically, and I seen people punk him out at bars. And he would get scared. And I was like, what is this dude thinking, dude? You ever seen that, that Donkey Kong thing where you just bounce people on the head? You don't need to have pinpoint accuracy. You just man them over. Fear was in his heart. Why? Because he had never been in a fight all his life. He was from a suburb high school. He went to Arizona State where he got his fanny padded every day of his life. He had never faced any type of adversity, so when adversity would come to him, he didn't know how to react, even though it would have to compute. Dude, you're 6'4", 275, and you move like a gazelle. You're stronger than all get out. You're intimidating looking. I mean, you could probably just bark back and it would be the end of it, but fear would come upon him and he would do nothing. Matter of fact, my buddy knows him. <laughs> Won't say his name because he's been here a few times. Cowardice is somebody that won't fight back. And you know, the devil's so smart, he can do a manipulation on you. He'll preemptively strike against you so you believe that you can't even fight back. Oh, Lord, if it be your will, take these demons from me. Nope, you're going to die with those demons with what you just said and what you just prayed. God will not answer prayers when he told you what to do. He told you to pray for the sick. 
He t- told you to pray for the nation. He told you to pray for yourself. He told you to pray for those that are in authority over you. He told you to cast out demons. He didn't tell you to pray to him to get rid of demons. He wants you to walk in power and authority. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, and it says it's the seat of power. Jesus sends the Holy Spirit to the believer, and he says, you'll receive power to be my witnesses. You can't be a faithful witness when you're cowardice and you refuse to fight back. So we have to fight according to the scriptures. And what's your first fight with the devil? Oh, my my buddy that was struggling with that demon that came in the past was moving in grace. He was already moving in his gifting because what? The demons were not in his spirit, man. Jesus was in his spirit, man. And so he was helping a guy that was waiting who just came as a ride. It was a divine appointment. And the guy was, man, I've been to deliverance, and I've been here. I mean, he was lost. And he says, how do I know I'm saved? And the guy that I'm referring to brought him back to the basics. He said, well, it's pretty easy. Jesus says, these things I have written that you would know that you have eternal life. See, his word is alive and his word is powerful. It's it's not like an Anthony Robbins self-help motivational book. Man, you could probably learn to have a little better discipline. You you, you could probably learn to crank out a few more hours. You could probably learn a little to be a little more competitive in a competitive sales environment. There's probably some benefit for it, but the word of God isn't like instruction from a man it's the power and the revelation of God to his children and he began to say hey we got to build this thing from the basics before you can get delivered you got to be built on the foundation and the rock who is Jesus Christ what you're suffering is you are building your house with Jesus but you also got some other areas you're trying to build additions and it's on sand there's no foundation and Satan has the right to send the streams and he has the right to send the floods and the storm to beat against the house and whatever's not built on Jesus Christ comes crashing down and so you want to get delivered and you got no real foundation I got a buddy he's a good guy and he didn't have any money. And, his, and he, he had some land in Mexico. Yeah, it's an amazing story. He is uh, born in New Mexico. He is, uh, he is a German descent, and he lives in Mexico. So he went down there with job site materials, and he built a house. And he says, man, I got, I got going and remodeling the kitchen, and I am doing the bathrooms, and now I got an updated roof, and I got all this. He goes, but I, gotta, I built the house with no footers. I wasn't thinking it was going to be the long-term house. I didn't think over the years that I would spend all this money. I didn't think that I would go to this level, and this would be my forever home, and my wife would live here, and she'd build all these beautiful pots and planters. And he goes, I thought I was going to be here temporary, so I only built a slab. No, wherever there's walls, you got to have footers because the ground is going to settle and and the earth moves. My dad's, I was just at my dad's house, and the ground has shifted this far since I was a kid. I haven't been there in 30-some years. This much is eroded away from the housing, and, and there's all these spots you can see on the houses that haven't been repainted that the paint line used to be up here, but now it's exposed concrete because the earth has eroded. Well, things are going to shift and things are going to change in your life and on this planet. So on this planet, when you're building a building, if it's going to last, it's got to have the adequate foundation. That's why there's building codes. Not in Mexico. You can do whatever you want over there. But we know from experience over here, it's, it's not going to last. And if you're building on something else, the devil's going to expose it. He's going to challenge it and he's going to send stuff right to it. Because he's got the legal right. But what most people don't understand, you have a reflection point, but your reflection point is always when you first got born again. And what you don't realize is, is man, when the, the devil is smart. 
So when you first get born again, I mean, I was excited. I prayed five prayers. I got five answers, man. I, I care about people. It took a few weeks, but I'm caring for people. I'm seeing value in people before. I didn't talk to anybody unless I could make money or they could do something for me or make me laugh or make me happy or I had an obligation because they were a neighbor. I just didn't meet people, want to know people. I stayed in my own business. But now I'm a Christian. I'm kind of just looking around, just kind of interested in people, just kind of curious. So what, what, well, the devil knows these things. So what does he do? He lies dormant because you just might ask God for more if something's in there. So he makes everybody think that when you first get born again, all the spirits are gone. And it feels like that because most of the time, some of the time, they'll just rush you right away. I mean, you get saved at a crack house. I mean, he's going to keep the foot on the gas because he's got you in the right place at the right time in the right season. So this isn't cookie cutter for everybody. But for the most part, for the mass populations, he kind of pulls back and he goes dormant. And he waits till the person starts operating with faith. And then he has to manifest himself because you're doing something according to the word of God. You're believing it. You know that you can't hear it now and not do it or you'll go into self-deception. So now you're being a hearer and a doer. And now he has to face you head up. And what happens is, is people get beat down. They get dejected, they get discouraged, they get dismayed, and they start wondering why all these bad things are happening when they happen to be doing all these good things, and this is undeserved, and this is unfair from God, and why is this happening? This doesn't happen to Sally and Bill and John, and all my other neighbors are doing just fine, and all hell's coming to breakfast for me. Lord, this isn't fair. I'm trying to do something good. I did something in obedience, and now I face this. Oh, what a masterful deceiver he is. And you blame the only one that can help you. You blame the only one that can help you. You, 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 you blame the only one that's always been for you there 100% of the time in any and every situation. And so what happens is people then just start shifting into, well, I better, I better just stay at work. I, I better just keep going to church. And, and uh, you know, I guess we're getting that Bible study and they shrink back. They start becoming in the category of the cowardice, not understanding because the lack of knowledge. One of the weapons of the devil is the lack of knowledge. If you have the lack of knowledge, you will perish. Things will die in those certain areas where you have no knowledge. And it's terrible. He takes away people's God-given destinies with the God-given gifts that you receive when you were first born again, and they never even get unpackaged. It happened to me. I'm not telling you something I haven't experienced. I left a lucrative job that paid six figures in the early 90s. I really believe it, that that hundred grand is like a quarter million in today's market, in, in buying power, purchasing power. And I met the devil. And things were in my mind and attitudes were in my mind. And then... I was so confusing to some people because some days I'd be preaching up a storm and it'd be a wonderful message and I would sound like I had my head all together and then they see me angry and mad and pounding stuff. Anger demons were manifesting in me. I didn't know I had given place to anger demons. I wasn't angry all the time, but hey, if I was drinking and I was listening to some Rob Zombie and I was listening to some gangster rap and I had 20-some beers in me, you best believe we were angry and people were hostile to me and I always had an attitude, kind of a sports mentality that it's us against them, so it was me against everybody in the world. I kind of took that attitude. And then you have fist fights and you have arguments and you have disagreements and you have turmoil and chaos. You let in anger spirits. Just because you get born again, everyone who's born again now has love deposited in their heart. And when that love is first put on you and you're reading the Bible and you're praying, it's like people try to offend you and you're like, oh, no, I love you, man. I don't want to fight with you. I forgive you, dude. I got no beef. I'm not really trying to live that life. And you're just in this grace bubble. Oh, but then they come back up to attack. Sometimes they'll just sit in your body and eat you up like they ate me up while I was preaching. They said, hey, we better watch out. He's got a good mentor. I was, I was studying under a, a mentor who had been in the jails and the hospitals for 20-some years who lived a life of sacrifice and servanthood all every day of his life, many hours of the day as, as an older man in his 80s. And he was setting out the example. They said, hey, we better lay low. 
we got to wait for him where we got an angle. We got to wait for him to get in these bad business deals where he's going to operate by sight and not by faith. And we're going to move, boys. But for now, we got to lay low. We got to try to get him some Kundalini spirit so he can work for us. These devils not, never stop scheming. They never stop working. So the only way and the only remedy any human being has is the word of God. If you know the word of God, it's a lamp. It's a lamp to your feet. It shows you exactly where you are every second of the day and your position in life. And then it's a light, it's a light to your path. It begins to shine the way of where you should go. God does not want you walking aimlessly. He doesn't wa want you walking in darkness. He wants you to be able to see clearly. That's why Satan wants you to sin so he can blind your mind. It's a war for the vision. It's a war for the understanding and revelation. It's the war for your faith because faith is an action and you have to step out according to the word of God. If you have faith to do something that's not biblical, that's not faith. That's belief in something. But faith is according to the word of God. Faith is according to the promises of God, the calling of God. And then when you respond to the calling God of God, you step out on it. That's faith. Faith without any actions is dead faith. I, I've told the story numerous times. You get these gangsters. I won't walk like a gangster, but 20 years in the jail, I, they come in, how you doing, man? They, they got to give every 10 years, it's a different handshake. So every 10, you got you to gotta get up with the times because that's how they're going to shake your hand. And I said, why are you in here, bro? You called me. What, what, how can I help you? He goes, man, I got a raw deal, man. I was put in here, man, not paying child support, but my kids are everything, man. They're everything to me. I said, no, nah, man, that's not going to fly with me, man. I don't have much time. I came in here to see you, so I got to treat you like I want to be treated. So uh, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to go hard. I'm going to go fast. I hope you can accept it, but they are not your everything because you are locked up for the failure of paying child support. You are an able-bodied working man. You refuse to pay that money. And all of a sudden, they got a defense for it. Well, well, well man, I'm not going to get played by no chick getting her hair done, her nails did, and all this. I, I, I told you, I'm, I, can't I can't listen to lies when I'm trying to help you. That is a lie. Whatever she does with that money is on her. In order for you to see your children, you have to pay that amount. It's deemed by the courts. You cannot say no or you'll be locked up where you are today. So you refuse to pay because of your pride and anger and unforgiveness towards her. Never saw it that way. Uh, yeah, I'm, that's why I'm trying to show you with some light. I walk in the light, not that I'm above anybody else, but I've subjected myself to the will of God. I pray about doing the word of God, and so my paths get laid out, and I go ahead and walk it out. And so when someone's believing darkness and they got a cloud that's blinding them, that's what God sent me. That's the only difference between me and you is I chose to get in the light. I've been in the light a little longer, and I'm able to expose darkness. And if they'll repent, they can get healed and blessed. But it's a classic example of people believing lies and how the lie will end, end up putting them in jail and they can't even see it was originated by a lie. They have someone to point to whose fault it was. It gets me to the other point that I want to get to. Oh, another weapon of the devil is the offense taker. Oh, when you take an offense, you're cooked as a Christian. You got into the frying pan, and it's got a bunch of grease in it, and you jumped on it, and the sizzling starts immediately when you throw meat on a hot sizzling, sizzling pan. I know, because I'm into eating greasy food. It's my favorite. It says this. It says that, in Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against you will prosper. An elementary Christian quotes that. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm just down on Mill Avenue. I'm just, oh, hey, how you doing? Oh, well, I'm a Christian. Oh, you're a Christian too? I like Christians, especially Christians with bodies like yours. We should get each other's numbers. Oh, you didn't understand his weapons. Not that that person is evil in themselves or a weapon. They're, they're a human being, but they've subjected themselves to what? I need someone to make me feel good. I need someone handsome to call my own so that I can have validity and so that I can have respect amongst my girlfriends. I need someone to spend time with. I need to be entertained. I don't like to be alone. And then, oh, through all this needs and selfish and flesh, he, he, you bump in to somebody. Well, you know, we, 
we love each other, and, and you know what? We, we'll probably get married. And so, so it's really not like having sex with anybody else, just a random person, a one-night stand. I would never do that. That's dangerous. You could get a disease. That's scary. You could get pregnant, and you wouldn't be able to raise that child by yourself, and you might not be able to find the guy. But this, oh, he's a masterful deceiver living in fornication. Oh, to, in this world, if you compared yourself with the world, it seems like you're a decent guy. It seems like you're an average girl. But the Bible says no fornicator will enter the kingdom of heaven. The first deliverance I ever had, the Lord told me in an audible voice, all liars go to hell. I was a born-again, spirit-filled Christian that was lying, and I was still going to be thrown in hell because all means all. Even though you're born again, if you continue to lie, all liars go to the lake of fire. So he gave me a warning. I heeded the warning. I manifested a demon. Brother Steve came out. I'll do a little imitation because I used to see him move. Dude, what's up with you, man? I said, Steve, I don't want to go to hell, man. Ah, I was growling. I was a professional liar. I'd run game on you so fast you wouldn't know what time it was. A gangster is moving slow. They smoke weed. I'm moving 10 steps ahead of everybody. The Spirit's helping me make money, doing deals so fast in Los Angeles, New York, Miami. I'm, 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 I could smell cops. I could see cops so easy. I knew how to just blend in. I knew how to, I had it down. The Spirit was teaching me. My two buddies became multi, multi-millionaires off it. I wasn't as good as the one. He was the best, but I was second. They both became multi-multi-millionaires. Why? The spirits gave them money. He'll give you the world to forfeit your soul. When I got saved, I was happy. I had two condos. I had a brand new Mustang GT. I, I had a beautiful fiance who was about to be my wife. I was healthy. I was in good shape. I slept like a baby. I had fun. I was excited. I was optimistic. I wanted to go subdue the world, take advantage of it, sail the seven seas. I wasn't any guilt. There wasn't any fear. There wasn't any condemnation. I wasn't lonely. I wasn't depressed. I wasn't filled with anxiety. I had no mental illness. I thought I was fine. I said, I'm going to change when I get old. I used to buy pot from this guy. He was 35. And I said, man, this is a bad look, you hanging around kids. I said, man, your hair is already falling out of your head, man. Dude, you can't have an Andy Gibb hairstyle when it's receded like that. Like, dude, we're 15 and 17. What are you doing smoking pot and, and what's up, little man? And like, dude, you can't be our mentor. Your car's broke down. You're at mom's house. You're selling pot. So in my mind, that was a bad look. So I said, you know what? When I get old like that, I'm going to stop sinning. And I'm going to go ahead and do what my mom and dad did. They were married for 54 years. They were committed to each other. They, they didn't flirt with other people. They, they were soldiers about raising the children. They were from the old school where your kids were everything, and you laid down your life to see them have a better life. So I'm going to do that, but I'm going to indulge myself in this sin while the pickings is good and easy. Then I'm going to change. Oh, no, the devil sets up an infrastructure. He puts up hooks. He opens doors. And one of the main ways and the main weapons he has is offense. Once you're offended, he'll make you offended at everybody. I remember the first time at this church the Holy Ghost was moving. I'd never been to a Holy Ghost church. And I certainly didn't think the Holy Ghost would move in a church that was in a strip mall. I thought he'd at least give somebody one of those magnificent big buildings. But no, he was in a strip mall. And this guy shook my hand, and I was like, oh, you know, that guy's pretty nice. Like, hey, I want to meet you, man. I want to grab lunch with you. I want to know you, man. And maybe we live life together. Maybe we don't, but at least we get to know each other. I said, man, that guy's pretty cool. I like that guy. We'll see how this goes. The next week, he bumps me to go shake someone else who's new his hand. And I sized him up, bagged him up all in one shot. I said, this dude is a hypocrite. Matter of fact, he's out of shape and you bumping into me. I just got into the belittling so I could put him in a little box. Anybody who disrupted me, anybody that, that didn't show me respect, I had a way to put them in a little box where I could control them, where they meant nothing to me. And, and it, was, it was years before I got to know the guy, and I said, man, he's just a little absent-minded type dude. I think he probably bumped into me and actually didn't even recognize it. I would recognize if I bumped into someone and Nudged him, uh, but I don't think he did. But what the devil was doing, he didn't want me to know people. He didn't want me to trust people. He wanted me to have my same bad attitude in the house of God. That's what he wanted to do. 
And then you know what? There were some preachers I didn't like. I mean, I was like, dude, what's this dude going to say? Your dad was the pastor, dude. You, you, you live this little cookie-cutter life with your mama cutting the, 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 your bread you, so you wouldn't have any crust on your peanut butter and jelly. Uh, they prayed over you five times a day. What kind of skills are you going to teach me? And I sized them up, put them in a little box, and never listened. But you know what that person was? He was a person that knew God all his life. Kind of like my kids. They can't really point a time when they got born again. They can point to a time when they got some deliverance. They can point to a time when they were praying in tongues or when the Holy Spirit touched them. But they had been with God since birth. They were dedicated before the house of God where we stood before the congregation and said, we make a decree and a declaration. Hold us accountable. Help us join arms with us. We're going to raise these ch children according to the precepts and the oracles of God. They belong to him. We're just the stewards of these children. They're his children. He gave us the privilege. And I, and I could have learned a lot from that guy. I learned a little from him, but I could have learned a lot. The devil had me sizing everybody up. He's a masterful deceiver. And you know what? Then when people cross the line, you take an offense. Oh, this devil's so smart. You won't believe this one. So I got two buddies at the church. They keep saying to me, I humble myself. God puts me in a testing phase. I got out of tickets. I had no college degree. I never read a book in my life. I didn't have a lot of options. I was like, man, I'm not the type of guy to go and clock in and clock out and get 40 hours in and have two weeks of vacation. I need to find some kind of job I could do myself. Bank One Ballpark was starting. I went down, got a $50 license and a hot dog cart. So I was at 7th Street in Jefferson every game for seven years. Seven's the number of completion. And these guys kept coming up to me. One owned a high-rise building downtown Phoenix. The other one was, had his own, mortgage, or his own mortgage brokerage and real estate brokerage. And they said, hey, man, there's so much more for you. We think God's got something better for you than selling these hot dogs. I believe I was at the right place at the right time. I learned how to associate with the lowly. My friends loved me, man. At the end of the day, the homeless people came out of the woodwork, and we had hot dogs, man. I put it on like the best of the paying clients. We had tomatoes and cucumbers and relish and mustard and ketchup. We had Polish dogs. We had kraut. We would have a little fest. And then after feeding them, I'd get to preaching before I went home. It was a wonderful time, and the Lord, he taught me many things, showed me the power of God for people to get off the streets, get their mind back, get their life back. Some died and went to heaven, right, in that whole seven-year period. But they kept prophesying to me, and it got to this point where I'm going. And they said, hey, we want to meet you at Applebee's. We set up the time. It was two of them. This time, this date, I wrote it down. I wasn't going to miss it. And I show up. And I wait 30 minutes. I wait 40 minutes. And I wait an hour. I wait an hour and a half. And I said, man, they're not coming. And I left. And I left offended. I said, come on, man. What is this? And I called one about a week later. I didn't want to show my vulnerability, kind of like when you get a girl's number that you go to school with. You don't want to call her the first day and look desperate. You kind of play, and you just bite your nails and wait until that I think I call you. It's supposed to wait a week. You wait three days. Well, I'm doing it with these guys. I got, a little, I got a little beef to settle. I waited at Applebee's for an hour and a half. I brought money in my pocket. I didn't even want you guys to pay. I was going to pay. And I called one. He goes, man, I can't believe it. I forgot. Man, that slipped my mind. I called the other one. He goes, man, I can't believe it. I forgot. That slipped my mind. I said, come on, what's the odds of that? I said, man, I must be really low on your totem pole that you're both going to sit down, make an agreement at church that you're going to meet me at a certain restaurant at a certain time on a certain date, and neither one of you show up. And you know what? Pride started talking to me, and I said, you know what? I'm going to do this myself. I'm going to do this with this money. I'm going to make this money. My uncle's backing me financially. I'm going to show them, and I'm going to have money, and I didn't need them to help me get there. I'm doing it myself. I crashed a million-dollar business with that attitude. I crashed it right into the ground, and it burned into rubble. It took four years from that meeting until the time that whole opportunity was crushed. And in between the time of me saying I'm going to do it myself, my uncle won a lawsuit against the government for $2 million and said, Rick, I want you to help me invest this money, and you're in charge. It started great at first in the real estate, but the real estate market started dipping. I had the sense to get out. No one was looking at houses. No one was buying. And I got out before the crash, but I was trusting in myself. It even got me to trust in myself a little more. And I went into a biodiesel business, and it crashed, and it burned. 
My uncle's never talked to me since I paid off my final debt to him. I haven't got a Christmas card. I haven't got a well wish. Everything, it was embarrassment. They, hey, he's a Christian. The hand of God is on him. Hey, we, we, we've bought land. We made money. We bought houses. We made money. We've loaned him personal money. He paid it back with interest and then crash. Well, how did it happen? It didn't happen overnight. It happened with the infrastructure that the devil put in me from the time of my childhood and he used it against me because I wasn't subjecting my talents and skills and my job opportunities to the Lord. I was trusting in my own skills and my own self. And now I had a little helper, which was a was little bit of resentment and unforgiveness towards other people. So therefore I was going to do it myself. And it all came crashing down. The weapons, no weapon formed against you will prosper. That's not just because you think it. That's because you choose to stand on the word of God and you use the word of God as a shield and you extinguish the flaming darts of the wicked one. And when the demon gets exposed that he's in you and you know there's something enticing you and driving you and manipulating you and skewing your decision-making processes and blinding your mind and you can't see things until it's too late, then you know you have to go through deliverance and you disarm him by driving him out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is written in the name of Jesus. They will cast out demons. But how many people cast out demons? Not many. Why? Because the devil is so manipulative and so masterful. At disarming believers and setting up infrastructure in their bodies and in their minds and their emotions. Every tongue which will rise against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of who? Of the servants of the Lord. If you're not a servant of the Lord, that no weapon formed against you doesn't even qualify you. You are disqualified to weapons coming at you from Satan because you are a rebellion. You are in rebellion. You are choosing to be a rebel by your own free will. I was writing to my buddy today and I said, look, the best time to get out of a burning building is when you smell smoke. The worst time to get out of a burning building is when the flames are raging all around you. You're coming out scarred and maimed. So when it says there is no temptation to give in a man than which he can find the door of escape, you don't wait till ever your lust is burning, till your anger is burning, till you're totally manipulated and broke and sick. You begin to smell the devil. You begin to make that turn. You begin to set yourself apart. For the Lord, you begin to ask him. You begin to drive things out. You begin to pray. You begin to pray for your enemies. You pray for yourself. You begin to ask him for things that you don't have, power and wisdom and vision, understanding and revelation. You begin to search the scriptures, understanding you're a worker. It deploys you into the harvest field when you take on the mindset of a servant and a worker. I'm going to be a preacher. YouTube will let you be one. But the real world, you better be walking right. You better be talking right. You better have some good. Somebody better walk in your house and see your kids love you and have some respect for you. you they better see your wife hug you and care about you and, 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 and ask if they can help you out and see the opportunity. They, they better see something. You, you can fool anybody over the Internet. You can pull Peter Popoff proved that. He sold, he sold water that he bought, bought from China and never even touched it. It went from China to a box to his $5 an hour worker and mailed it to you and told you it was holy healing water. Came out with millions. You can fool everybody on a screen, but most people ain't saved on the screen. They ain't certainly not discipled over a screen. They're a disciple with someone who gets around them, gets involved in their life, shows love, shows a helping hand, shows concern, shows empathy. And it's hard. Me and Pete got a guy. And man, he looks like a million bucks. What's awaiting on the other side of, of him overcoming is a million bucks. But man, Knucklehead should have been his nickname. Because he does the most knuckleheaded things ever. But you know what? God keeps giving me grace. There's something about when I know somebody is not done with by God. Something comes out of me. See, I don't lean on my own understanding. I realize that I can deceive myself. You know what? I can be led by my emotions. I can be led by my feelings. I can be misled by what I see in somebody else. So I got to be available for the Holy Spirit to tell me I'm not done yet. So I can disqualify myself from wanting to help the person. But God's choosing me. And so he gives me a little grace. 
I just open my mouth. I start speaking life. And man, sometimes stuff will rip out of me. Sometimes people call. You know, about 500 people have my number. I'm not prank called. I'm not bothered because that enemy is like, don't play with that number. People don't play with my number. So when they call, I, 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 since people don't play, I take it it's, a, it's God sending them to me. Sometimes I am a little burned out with them. I'm a little discouraged with them. And I, I start doing my, my uh, biblical recall skills. And I start quoting them scriptures. Then I think about another one, and I think about another one. Sometimes they won't say nothing. Sometimes I've got my record, I think, is 25 verses before they say anything. And all I'm trying to do is start some faith because faith comes by hearing and the hearing of the word of God. Wrapped up in all these troubles and coming right out of the gate, oh, woe is me. You have no faith. I'm trying to give you something you don't got so we can have a meaningful conversation so I can impart something I've learned or went through so you can use it and be victorious. You don't have to go through all that losing in business finances. You don't have to pick up kundalini because I told you to, how to spot kundalini. You start looking at people, man, when people got the Lord and, oh, like, hold on, man. I'm not buying a car from a guy that looks like you. I'm going to ask for the next sales guy. I'm not buying anything you're carrying spiritually either. I mean, you need to be a discerner of spirits. You need to be a sensible discerner. Come on. But, boy, a guy can dance and, oh, he's got a rap. He's a spoken word. Boy, he's got some cool braids and a shiny face. And boy, it's interesting to listen to him. Why? Because your brain has been programmed on entertainment and he brings the entertainment value. And so you've given him some time and pretty soon you start giving him some grace and pretty soon you're giving him some compromise until he's infecting you with demons. You need to have the discerning of spirits. The lack of discernment is a weapon of Satan. Discouragement is a weapon of Satan. Distractions are a weapon of Satan. Unbelief is a major weapon of Satan. False teachers are an essential weapon of Satan. Deception is a weapon of Satan in the last days. We are in the last days. Hello. I don't know what more I could tell you. It's just you've been slow cook. Some people have a hard time really grabbing it. And I sometimes, I go to coffee, and, and I just, I kind of people watch. I'm not looking for the booties and the bodies anymore. I just like looking at people. I just don't look at them directly. I got a good peripheral vision. I drink my coffee, and I look in, inconspicuous, but I'm watching people. But what I'm seeing more and more is how lost everybody is. How lost the conversation is. How engrossed everyone is with sexuality. I mean, you can't even smile at a woman that's anywhere close to your age. You couldn't just smile like have a good day like I could to my brothers. Think it, hey, don't you ever get an idea about me, Sonny. I'm not for you. Not my, I, I mean, you can't because everyone's so hypersexualized. I just got to go and act like I'm just getting my coffee. I got to watch everything through the corner of my eyes. Be because what? Everybody is in this confusion. I can't even talk to anybody for years. I talked to everybody at the gym. I talked to them in the sauna. Now no one will even take their earbuds out. If you say anything, they're, huh, what? And then they get back into Instagram. Nobody even cares about anyone else. They've, they've, they've been indoctrinated in their beliefs. They've been submerged in their own world, their own wants, their own hopes and dreams. And there's no room for nothing else anymore. It's the last days, and it says the, in the last days, even the elect would be deceived if it were possible. That's some powerful deception, to, to deceive the elect. And then how's he going to do it? It says he's going to do it through the doctrines and the teachings of demons. It isn't bad doctrines. I got a buddy who's got some bad doctrines. And I don't want to get into bad doctrines, but Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he gives them the great commission. You go into the world and you preach the gospel to every creature and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is New Testament. But now he's got a bad doctrine. You can only do it in the name of Jesus. Now, you were born again in 1986. You had a real conversion. All that 
Father, Son, Holy Ghost, now we're going to have to redo it now. Come on, sign up. It's got to be in the name of Jesus. Jesus himself said, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I'm not against in the name of Jesus as well. It does say that. But these doctrinal demons are so, he, he, he got over them. He said, man, I can't, I can't win the world in that lane only. I, I can't make that a doctrinal difference. I, I, I can't just be hard line on this. I got to go and just get these people saved. When I baptize them, he, he made a compromise. He said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, which is the name Christ Jesus. I'm like, okay, that's a little confusing, but, you know, you're spreading out and trying to get everybody. Well, that's what someone that's got the most incredible gift to preach I've ever heard in my life. I've never heard anybody preach as good as him. I mean, when the Holy Ghost comes down, it's not that guy. It's the Holy Ghost. And he gets ripping, and he gets dropping revelation. Like, me and Mike, we're like, dude. And that's all we say after some of his sermons when the Holy Ghost falls. But now... It's gone to such a crazy level. It's gone whole bonkers. And the kundalini now is in all these churches. And you find people, whoa, whoa, Jesus. Oh. No, I'm about to pull my hamstring. <laughs> I, better, I better cut that out. I'll be anointing myself with oil before the altar call. God is not the author of confusion. He's the author of perfection. I'm fine. Man, some of the guys that affected me the most, affected me the most, are these jail guys that never watched anybody worship God. They've never been to church. So they don't know how to do it. And they're singing. They sing terrible. But they never thought, I sing terrible. I should slow it down. They're singing to God. They're not worrying about no one else. And they got weird hand motions. You know, they're, they're trying to figure it out. But they're trying to give him everything. Oh, it's, it's, it's powerful. It, it, it's wonderful to see that. But now there's this, this, this cookie cutter. Everything's becoming cookie cutter. Why? Because he's infiltrated the system and it's a program. Somebody's got to come and rock the house. Somebody's got to come and stir the spirit. Someone's got to kind of move you. But at the end, there's, no, there's nothing happening with God. It's just, an, it's just another come on down. It's just another time you've been down. But see, God's not raising you to be that. You don't got the showmanship. You don't got that little extra pizzazz that's going to draw the masses. And God didn't want you to have it. He's going to give you the Holy Ghost. And so when you preach the word in truth, you overcome by the blood of the lamb. You overcome by the word of your testimony. If you don't have a testimony, the, the, the woman with the issue of blood had a testimony. The demoniac had a testimony. Uh, the woman at the well had a testimony. You, you have to have a testimony. Is you're testifying of what God did for you. If you're struggling, you need to have God help you. You need to get a touch from God, whether it's healing, whether it's deliverance, whether it's restoration, whether it's a reconciliation, rather, with your, with your loved ones. You've got to leave your gift at the altar. You've got to reconcile. You've got to apologize to them. You've you, you got to get the burden off your back. Jesus said, hey, I'll take that burden. It's, mine is light and my yoke is easy. You find rest for your soul. You've you got to come to Jesus. And when you do it, then you know exactly how to help someone else get the same touch. Then you don't have to come with all the showmanship. Then you don't have to come with the smoke. Then you don't have to come with the dancers. And you don't have to come with the 12-piece band. And you don't have to have a beautiful building. You can just come as you are, and God will use you. And you'll see the fruits produced. The word of God will always produce good fruit. It says this. He said, I'm the vine. You're the branches. He says, look, no one can bear fruit outside of me. Remain in me, and I in you. Hey, I'll give you the desires of your heart if you delight yourself in me. But most people get confused. The desires of your heart is not your old wants, will, and, and, and expectations. They're new. God comes to make all things new. And he places them inside your spirit, man. So that if he told you everything right out of the gate, you wouldn't be able to accept it. And you'd be reluctant to do it. And you'd be hesitant because you would imagine how it would be. You would have an expectation of how it would be. But he wants to slowly take you down this road and show it to you step by step and build it and birth it in you. And it's done by being a servant. It's done by loving God first. And it's a natural outflow. 
A lot of people get this thing twisted that, hey, I'm all miserable, but I'm going to go ahead and preach to everybody, and I'm going to preach my way out of a jam. Because God's going to see how valuable I said I am, and he's going to want to remove all this stuff out of me so I can do more for him. No, no, that's confusion. He's the potter, you're the clay. First thing when you do when you make a vessel is you work with the adequate amount of clay. You take a big lump of clay and you'll soften it up and you'll shape it, you'll form it. But once it's pliable, then you start cutting off the stuff that you don't need for the vessel that you're creating. That's deliverance. Jesus is the deliverer. He wants to deliver you. He wants to do it tonight. And Satan only has two holds. I sound like a broken record, but he only has two holds. His holds in a believer that's born again where he won't leave is unrepented sin. That's your free will. If you refuse to repent and apologize to the Lord, then the demons get to stay. You've given them place. They're in there. They stay. You repent. They don't have any legal right. It says forgive and you will be forgiven. If you refuse to forgive, God says, I will take mine back from you, and I will turn you over to tormentors. Some of you could actually be here because God didn't want you to go to hell, and people don't understand. Paul turned people over to Satan. I don't talk about the devil in here. This is the house of God. I'm the man of God. I'm the pulpit of God, and he gets nothing in here. You better expose the enemy because Paul said, I turned them over to Satan that they would learn not to blaspheme. But after he does what he does to people and they come back to church, let me tell you, don't treat them as second-class citizens. Restore the rightful position as men of God. So it says, God says, if you won't forgive, I'll turn you over to them. Tell you, pay the last penny. What's the last penny? What's the price? Is you release those people and you pray for them. You forgive them. You tear up the IOU. You choose to remember it no more. And when the devil tells you to remind, it, remind you of it, you go ahead and tear up another piece you forgot to tear up and throw it away until you only come up with prayers. He reminds you of them. I believe I prayed my ex-partner that caused that business to tumble and burn to the ground. He took the remnants of it, and it went on to make a lot of money. And I believe I prayed him into a lot of money. I'm taking reward watching them on Facebook. I said, man, I've been praying for their money. I've been praying for their blessings. I've been praying for their children. They're, he's not my enemy. My battle is not with flesh and blood. My battle is with the spirit world. But in order for the spirit world to use a weapon against you, he has to use a vessel. And he uses the human being, the human realm as the vessels. They're the ones that word curse you. Those are the ones that rape you. Those are the ones that abuse you. Those are the ones that break promises to you. Those are the ones that lie to you. Those are the ones that manipulate you. Those are the ones that weren't there when you were a child and you needed them. And so he wants you to believe that was your warfare. Therefore, they get the blame for what he set up. He set up the structure. He's the father of lies. He's the master of deception. He's the architect of evil. So if we'll repent today... Just tell the Lord we're sorry. You come as you are. You just come as a little kid. I'm sorry, Lord. I've been doing this for a long time. I got a laundry list of sin, and I'm going to confess them tonight. I'm going to apologize. I know the enemy's on my tail because my gifts are snuffed. Nothing's happening. My joy isn't like it used to be. My hope, my expectation is not where I want it to be. I have fear more than I have faith. There is something that needs to get out of me today. You repent and you forgive and they will go. I'll show you how to do it. Heavenly Father, thank you for all your people that you sent tonight, Lord. Thank you. I believe you sent them all sovereignly, that they were the ones that were supposed to be here tonight. I believe that message didn't come from me. It came from you. And I thank you for it. But now, Lord, we're asking you to come. We're asking you, Holy Spirit, to soften our hearts. Lord, reveal, Lord, there's some people that's been blinded. I know how the enemy works. They've been blinded on some of their sins. They've been blinded on some of the people in whom they've taken offense. It's been so long, it's burrowed down, it's buried down in there. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the spirit of revelation. I thank you, Lord, that you're the light shining in these dark places. Tonight, Lord, we want to confess all of our sins. 
We want to forgive everyone in whom we've took an offense and have negative emotions against. So, Lord, I apologize to you. I have bad attitudes toward my mother and father and the way that they lived. I judged them. I expected perfection from them. It was an unfair judgment. And the things they did to hurt me, I'm blaming what they did on my current situation. And I'm never going to get out of it blaming them, Lord. I repent, Lord, and I place value on my mother and father despite of all their sins, despite of all their failures, despite of abandonment, despite of neglect or lack of love. I forgive them in Jesus' name. I forgive ex-wives, ex-husbands. I forgive my children. I forgive my brothers and sisters. I forgive my church family. I forgive coworkers. I forgive any witch or warlock or sorcerer who tried to curse me. I bless them. I forgive them. I pray they'd come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and be born again and saved for all eternity. I pray they'd be in the family of God. I do not return cursing for cursing or reviling for reviling. Today, I release blessings. My battle is not with any human being that I've dealt with or I'm dealing with. My battle is with the demons. I take the hate off these people right now. I take the anger and the rage off these people, and I'm placing it on the wicked one. I know it's him that's been destroying my life. And Lord, I forgive myself. I've been my own worst critic. I've cursed myself many times, and I'm so sorry, Lord. Those demons heard it. They're, trying, they're coming in through that word I spoke over myself. I repent of ever saying that. I change my mind today, and I believe the scriptures that I'm a blessed man. And the plans that you have for me is that I would prosper and be in good health even as my soul prospers. I renounce believing that I'm a cursed man. I renounce believing that I'm a cursed woman. I renounce, Lord, having any ill will towards you, any blaming of, to you, Lord. I apologize for that sin in Jesus' name. Have mercy on my soul. I've been putting things in my body. It makes me temporarily comfortable. It makes me temporary, uh, temporarily receive a sense of relief, but it never fixes my problems, Lord. And now it's even worked its way into an addiction. Lord, I apologize for addictions to drugs and to alcohol and to people and to money and to social media. All these were addicted to work. I repent of all these addictions in Jesus' name. I cannot serve two masters today. I'm choosing to serve you. In order to serve you, I got to cut off the sin that so easily entangles. So tonight, I'm confessing it as sin so that it can be cut off, so that I can walk out of here without a bondage on my back, without a shackle on my legs and hands. I want to be free, Lord. I believe you want me free. So thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. Thank you for your shed blood on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for its power to wash my sins into the sea of forgetfulness. I know after tonight, Lord, if that sin is trying to come back into my memory, it's coming from the wicked one because I choose to forgive myself. I know you forgave me when I confessed it, so by the process of elimination, I'll know from now on it's the devil and I'm not going to listen anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want to fulfill my call, Lord. I wanted big things that... Hey, that might happen. That might not happen, but Lord, serving people, helping people, making one disciple is a big thing. I, I wanted many. I wanted all these wonderful platforms, but Lord, I can't have those unless I learn to be faithful with a little. If I'm faithful with a little, I can be trusted with more, but if I'm not faithful with a little, I won't be trusted with more. So Lord, I'm looking to be faithful tonight. I'm changing to be faithful with what you've given me. I want, to, I want my healing in my body, Lord. Yeah. I want to be healed in my broken bones and my, my body being out of whack and out of, out of alignment from your design. And I know you can heal me. Yeah. You're not a respecter of persons. Thank you for doing it, Lord. I pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If that's you and you know you need to get some spirits out,
The ministry team's going to come forward. I want you to come forward. Use your faith and your boldness, and I want you to line up in between that black mat and that carpet, and we're going to pray for you. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit of boldness to come. Thank you, Lord, that we're not going to be cowardice. We're going to be bold to believe that our Father wants to bless us. We're going to be bold to believe that Jesus is just like he was yesterday, today and forever. He doesn't change. He's the Savior, the healer, and the deliverer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everybody coming. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus who walk by faith and not by sight. So when you're coming forward, you're walking by faith. You're stepping out in faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you gave us the authority over the devil. We use that authority right now in the name of Jesus. I bind the devil, everybody that came forward. I bind every devil attacking the mind in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I bind every foul devil in the name of Jesus of sorcery and divination and the occult. I bind the devil of offense in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I bind every devil that trick them into engaging into witchcraft with tarot cards and Ouija boards and astrology, white magic and black magic and crystals. I bind your power in the name of Jesus. I bind the kundalini that infiltrated the body of Christ, and I command you to come out of there. I command the kundalini that infiltrated, that tried to masquerade as God. I bind the witchcraft. Come out of that man right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. You're a liar. You're trying to make these people feel unloved and uncalled. You're a liar. I command every lying spirit, you're bound in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Every lying devil about sexual character and the ability to control our vessels in sanctification and honor. I bind the lust spirits in Jesus' name. Take a big breath. I bind you right now. Come out of there. You're going to come out right now. Pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. I bind every pride spirit. Every spirit that tells them just to do it as they are with their own power. You're trying to hide. You're a liar. The spirits that are trying to hide, I bind your power in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Thank you. Don't move. God's coming to you. He's going to help you. Come out right now. Come out. I command you to let these people go right now. Come out of the mind. Come out of the mind. I break the stronghold that said... If you're going to be delivered, you're going to have to do it yourself. You're a liar. We are saved by grace through faith. We are delivered by the mighty hand of Jesus Christ. I command you to come out right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. All those fears, I command you to let this woman of God go. I command fear of her child, fear of her future, fear of her money, fear of the love of God. I command you by the authority of Jesus. Come out. Come out of there. Fear, stop tormenting her about the future. Come out of there. All the way out. He's delivering you. Let your tears go. He's setting you free. Come out of there right now. I command every spirit right now. You lied to her about works. You lied to her about comparison with other people. You used every curse that was ever spoken over her. You used all kinds of demonic power to steal these gifts, and I bind your power. You've been choking her at night, devil. You're a liar, and I command this chest pressure to come out right now. Pressures. Pressures to say, what if I stop living righteous and God doesn't come through? That is a demonic pressure. I expose you in Jesus' name, and I command you to come out right now. Come out. Come out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's not her call. I command those demons to come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you come out of there. You heard that prayer in tongues. Come out. I command you to release her. Release right now. Release the shame right now. Release the shame from past lifestyle. I release the lie that tells her she missed the call. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of there.
take two big coughs right there from your belly. Come out. Come out. Come out. You're a liar. Come out of there right now. Fight him, sir. You got him. Fight him. Come out of there. Porno. Come out of there right now. Porno. Fight him. Come out of there right now. Any witchcraft. Come out of there. Witchcraft. Rebellion. Witchcraft. Sorcery and the occult. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Let him go. Come out of there. Kundalini. Come out of there. Kundalini. Come out of there right now. Come out. Kundalini that came to him and attacked him. You come out right now. Come out of there. All those spirits. Come out. Just be honest, Lord. I, I can't be prideful and a servant. I can't be that guy and your guy. I'm choosing to be your guy above that guy, Lord. I want the glory to go to you, not to my giftings, not to say, wow, God really gifted that man. Of course they could use a man so gifted, Lord. That's not a part of the program. David was a man after your own heart. You're not like a man that looks on the outward appearance. You look upon the heart, Lord. I repent of all the sin in my heart in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that this woman is not rejected. I know the devil has lied to her to even question eternal life through Christ Jesus if she was really even saved. Thank you, Jesus. You're showing her that you love her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this love. You've always loved her. You loved her even when she was rebelling. And it made you sad, Lord. And it made it you sad when people hurt her, Lord. They wounded her with lies. They wounded her with abusing her, her body and manipulating her, Lord. And it hurt you, Lord. You've always cared about her. Thank you, Jesus. Take a big breath. Devil, you're a liar. That assassin, I call you out in Jesus' name. That generational curse that came from ancestors that were atheists, that's been chipping away at her salvation and her walk with Jesus, I break you right now. I break you right now. The spirit of atheism that tried to reclaim her. No, she has been bought with the blood of the Lamb, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I command you now, come out. You've been condemning her and writing her down for years. And I break this stronghold of Satan in Jesus' name. And I command you to go now. I command you to get up out of her brain now. Go. There he goes. Come out of the brain. Come out of there. Come out of there. Condemnation. Low self-esteem. Go. Go, 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 go. Come out, poor self-worth, suicidal thoughts, eating disorders, believing that her value was her outward appearance. You're a lying spirit. I break you in Jesus' name. I break you off her right now in Jesus' name. Let the women of God go. Let the women of God go. Satan, you've been assassinating them for years. I command you to come out of this woman. I command you to come out every word curse, feeling bad about herself. God always looked at her heart, and he always loved her, and he always cared for her. And you sent people to rip her down. I break those word curses right now. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Thank you, Jesus. All the fear, go. All the fear of not being good enough for God. Come out of there right now in Jesus' name. God does not call people who have gifts. He gives the people gifts in whom he calls. You've been blocking these gifts from moving in her life. She's a gifted woman of God. And you've been blocking them, foul devil. And I command you to let her go right now in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Feeling that I'm, I'm messed up. But just right there. Any type of There he goes. Go. 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 Come all the way out. Come out. Go. I command you. God has loved her. He's showing her the love. You're lying. Now every liar, come out. Every liar, come out. Go. Anxiety. Come out. All those anxiety attacks. Come out right now. All those times she felt alone. Come out. Come out. Loneliness. There he goes. Come out. Go. Go. What do you think you need to be delivered? Keep going. You're getting healed in your soul first, and then you'll get delivered. What do you think you need help with, sir? Yeah? Let's start with the first one. You got negative emotions about anybody? Another big breath. You willing to forgive them? Lord Jesus, what's your first name? Adrian. Heavenly Father, me and Brother Adrian come before you. We know you're here. You're touching all these people. Lord, we're releasing these people right now in Jesus' name. 
They disrespected this man of God. They belittled this man. They were sent as messengers to make him feel angry and vengeful, spiteful, rebellious. We forgive them right now. We disarm this weapon in Jesus' name. I forgive myself, Lord. Thank you for forgiving me, Lord. Freely what I have received, that I freely give right now. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, there's a weight of perfectionism. There's a weight the devil put on this man that he needs to buck up and fight back and be quick-witted and quick-tongued to survive. Lord, those skill sets don't work in the spirit world. We're coming vulnerable. We're opening our hearts to you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Take away the infrastructure of Satan through deliverance, of resentment and bitterness towards himself. There he goes. Come out. Hatred towards other people. Come out. Come out. The spirit of hate and vengeance. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Anger and rage. Come out right now. Party spirits. Come out. Come out. There they go. Fight them, sir. You're getting delivered. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Keep going. You got the Holy Ghost. You got the anointing. Drive them all out, sir. You leave free. Come out of there right now. Mind binding spirits. Spirits that attack the mind of the believers. I, dis I bind you from operating right now. That discouragement spirit. You almost had them walk out of this building without a touch of the Holy Ghost. I bind these lying spirits. You're a liar. You're telling them to do it themselves under their own power. The Bible says nothing is, nothing is possible without God. Come out right now. We need God. God makes all things possible. I command the guilt to come out of her belly. I command it to come out. I bind your power. I command this loneliness. Searching for friends. Searching for entertainment. Searching for love. It's found in Christ Jesus. It's found in the body of Christ. He's a called out believer. The devil's misleading him. He's leading him astray. Come out of there right now, you mind binder. I break your hold right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel any assignment of you giving him depression. I cancel any assignment of you sending him someone filled with witchcraft to destroy his anointing. And I command you to come out right now. I command you go. Come out. Come out. Come out of there right now. Not good enough. Come out of there right now. That's a lying spirit. Not good enough. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Thank you. Not good enough. Come out right now. You're lying to him. Not good enough. Come out. Rejection. Come out right now. Feeling God rejected him. There he is. Feeling God rejected him. Come out. God has not rejected him, but called him. Come out right now. The devil that told him to quit. The devil that told him to shrink back. I command you to come out. Go. 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 Keep going. You got him. Go right now in Jesus' name. Go out. All that guilt. All that condemnation. I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Come out of there right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Go. Take your bitterness and your poison. He forgave those people when he came to the altar. Take a big breath, sister. You'll get them out. Come out of there right now. Witchcraft. Come out of there. Witchcraft rebellion. Witchcraft mind control. I break your hold in Jesus' name. Witchcraft, I break your hold in Jesus' name. I command you to let her go. I command you to let her go. I break the witchcraft spell and hex that came back to her. Come out right now. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Keep going. You got the bitterness coming out, sir. Keep going. You got the anointing now, sister. Go. Leave my body. All those sexually demons that transfer through past lovers. Come out right now. Dominated by a man. Come out right now. Come out. Being dominated by a man. Come out right now. Come out. Take a big breath, sir. You're here. You got faith. You stuck around. Take a big breath. All the anxiety about life, about life skills, about money, about relationships. Go. Go out. Go out. Go out. Go out. Go out. Come out. Feeling that he's not in the right position with the right skill set for the body of Christ. You're a liar, devil. I break generational curses of lying. I break generational curses of praying to saints. I break generational curses of praying to Mary. I break generational curses of praying to idols. He knows the truth. And today the truth sets him at liberty for the glory of God. Come out right now. I break generational oppression right now. I break generational oppression on his mind. I break generational oppression to bring him into a sexual sin or bring him into drugs. I break these generational curses. Keep coming out. Bitterness. Keep coming out. Mind-binding spirits. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. He'll go. Come out of there. 
Come out of there. Come out of his body. Come out of his body. Come out of the rock and roll rap. Come out of there right now. Rebellion music. Come out of there right now. Come out all that worldly entertainment. Come out of there right now. I break that stronghold from movies. I break that stronghold from entertainment. I break the movie devil. Go in Jesus' name. Come on out. You're blocking her anointing. You're trying to get her to compare herself with other people that speak faster, that memorize more scriptures. You're a liar. God moves with the Holy Spirit power in the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I command you to come out, you liar. Come out of there right now. Telling her don't minister and love people. Don't share the gospel. Don't be courageous to see someone healed and delivered. You're lying to the woman of God. I command you to come out. I command you to come out from the roots. All generational witchcraft, sorcery, and divination. Come out from the roots. Come out from the roots. Stop stalling and go. This is the last week, devil. Come out. This is the last night. Come out of there right now. Emphysema and asthma and diabetes. Every health debilitation. Come out of him right now. Come out of there. Take your poisons and go. Take all these cancerous cells and go. Take all blood clots and sickness and go. There he goes. Grab those napkins. Oh, man. There he goes. Come out of there right now. Go. Go. Keep going, sickness. Keep going, sickness. What do you need delivered from? Oh, what do you got? Oh, you were carrying her, her. No, I was carrying all the stuff. From um, from your daughter. From her, from him, from the family, just so much stuff. I just cried oh, okay. out, out, and then I caught some stuff. Oh, okay, I just relax. Stuff. Lord, did thank I, you for the I Holy Ghost. Well, we'll see. Let's ask the Holy Ghost to fill okay. you up. Lord, yes, we come yeah. humbly. Just shut your mind down a little bit. No racing thoughts. We're just thinking about the love of Jesus Christ and the wonderful things of which you did already today in that one-on-one -on -one counseling. But Lord, we don't want to go home with nothing unclean, nothing foul and offensive to you, Lord. So we lay it all down, all the racing thoughts, all the con concerns, all the worry, all the confusion. We lay it all down and we ask you to fill her mind in Jesus' name with your love. Thank you for washing over her with your shed blood, cleansing her from the unrighteousness and the sin. Thank you that you made a way for her to come boldly just as she is, to receive from you right now grace in her time of need thank you for the holy spirit power coming upon her and we use that power and i bind any devil hiding in this body that's been there since childhood i bind all rejections and fears i bind every spirit that attacks the mind in jesus name come out of there i command you to come out of there come out of there mind control controlling her mind with negative thoughts controlling her mind with negative emotions controlling and sending other people to bring more confusion thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. They're beginning to come out. Thank you, Jesus, for it. Thank you, Jesus. Any spirit hiding in there when she was worried about her weight, when she was worried about her health, when she was worried about aging gracefully, all that worry, I break your hold in Jesus' name. All that worrying about things that God always takes care of, what we're going to eat and what we're going to wear, I command you to come out of the brain in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. All the bitterness towards herself. All the bitterness towards her daughter. Come out of there right now. Bitterness and anger. Bitterness and anger. Come out angry at herself. Questioning God. Come out of there right now. Come all the way out. Questioning God why bad things happen to good people. Come out. Come all the way out. Every spirit of infirmity. Every spirit of offense. Come all the way out. Come all the way out. Confusion. She's got the power to cast out devils. Come out. What do you think you need help with, sir? Watch out for that guy's yeah, fingers, yeah. Like I said, um, for Thank my you, daughter. Jesus. For my hey, could you stand here while he's telling me the story, ma'am? Could you stand right there so I could pray? No, right here where I can put my hands on you. So while he's telling me, the Holy Ghost is coming for you. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Keep telling me. Just pray for my daughter. You know, that she's, uh, Thank you, Jesus. You're going to be a wonderful prayer for your daughter. You're going to be the one for that. What do you, This is time. This moment's for you. What do you need help with? Even that God does deliverance. Um, it is real. Just, you know, I, I try to do like I say to my wife. Is just, I don't give the enemy any power or authority. I don't even talk about the devil or demons and stuff like that. Because I don't want to give authority because God and the, with the angels fight that battle. You pray in tongues? Um, pray to, yeah, I pray in tongues. Lord, thank you that Lord. Thank you, you, Lord. 
He's got the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, Lord, he, you teach him and remind him everything that you spoke. Thank you for the wonderful gift of tongues to intercede for himself. Thank you that you're helping this man who intellectually needs to see and understand everything. He needs to be able to look at it with a microscope and figure it out before he can receive it. Lord, there's too much perfectionism, there's too much humanity, and there's too much flesh in there for him to get delivered. Help him, Lord. Help him to see everybody needs deliverance in this sin-stained world that walked on this earth for 50 years. I command any hiding devil in there from past rejection. I bind every devil in his head that told him things in his childhood that he still believes today that are lies. I break the liar in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Let your tongues go, sir. Come out of there right now. All this rejection spirit from every man that physically abused this woman, every foul devil of offense when people were offended by her and hurt her and abused her sexually and abused her emotionally, I bind your power and I command you to come out of her right now. I know you're the one giving that nervous feeling. In Jesus' name, I command you to come out. I bind your power to resist. And I command you in the name of Jesus to come out. Come out of that woman. Come out of that woman. Come out of that woman. Come out of that woman in Jesus' name. Come out of that woman right now. Come out of that woman. Offense from men. Men who lied to her and abused her. Come out of there right now. Come out of the man of God. Come out in Jesus' name. Witchcraft rebellion. Witchcraft spells. Witchcraft hexes. Come out of there right now. Demons of low self-esteem and poor self-worth. I bind your power. Come out of here, witchcraft. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Every demon that came from Ohio, we renounce you. Every demon that came from Ohio, from that ritual, come out. Every demon that came into sexual sin, I bind your power. Come out. Come out of there. Anger in himself. Anger and rage. I heard you the other day. Now come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Keep going, saints. You got him, bro. You got him. You got him. He's nervous. He's shaking. He's in your belly. Get him. You got him. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. In Jesus' name, there's more for everybody. More anointing. More Holy Spirit power. Have you figured it out yet? How they blocking you? You figured it out yet? What God tell you? How they blocking you? Yeah. Pride is kind of like it's a, it's a deceptive spirit because it's applauded. It's appreciated by people. It builds a, a, a false sense of security and value and worth. And it's based on human talents, human abilities, and financial possessions. And pride is a powerful sin in the spirit world. It says it becomes, comes before one's destroyed. So let's just pray this. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to apologize for being prideful, Lord. I didn't want to face any rejections. I didn't want to face any fears, Lord. And so I covered up some things. With some things I saw, some attitudes, some behaviors. And Lord, I want to trust you completely, Lord. I can't trust in myself. I can't trust in a facade. I can't trust, trust some things I put on just to cover up deficiencies. I want you to supply all my needs according to your glorious riches which are in heaven. Holy Spirit, I pray you'd come and give him the spirit of conviction. He's missing some things. He's, he sinned a few times and he didn't even feel convicted. He found it strange. But I know it was the devil who blocked him and blinded him. He even lied to him, said he's special and God will look over those sins in which he's been committing. This is a serious demon he picked up because I believe he does have that anointing. I do believe he has that gift. And the devil has made a preemptive strike since his childhood when he felt rejected and alone and deficient and he told him how to trust in things and people and attitudes I'm asking you to help my friend in Jesus name so he can go home different thank you for grace and thank you for mercy and thank you for love in Jesus name I bind those generational curses of womenizing I bind 
the generational curses of machismo, of manpower, of chauvinism, I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. And I command you, you've been hiding in here, devil. You've been hiding under gold watches and gold chains and good looks and nice clothes and persuasive speech, but you are now exposed in the name of Jesus. He knows now you are pride. And he's not looking to the end of pride being destroyed in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out. Come out of there. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for softening his heart. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You delivered his girlfriend, Lord. You showed him the power of God. I thank you that tonight's his night in Jesus' name. Satan, I break your hold in Jesus' name. I command you to come out. Right from your belly where it's tight. Come out. Come out of there, pride. Pride and self-sufficiency. Come out. Casualness to sex and porn. Come out right now. Come out, you blinder. Come out, all that lust demons. Come out right now, premarital sex devil when he was born again. Come out trying to build this case and accusation against him to send him to hell. I bind your power. Come out of there right now. I bind your power. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. You're hiding. Hiding. Come out right now. Come out. His identity is in good looks and gold chains and fancy watches and fine cars. You're a liar. The gifts are given inside the spirit man. Come out. The gifts are released through love. Come out right now. You're trying to steal the real anointing, devil. You're trying to use natural gifts and steal the real anointing, the anointing that breaks the yoke of slavery. I bind your power and I command you now. Come out. Fight him now. Fight him now. Fight him. You're lying to him. Tell him, don't let it go. You'll be an average guy. You're a liar. He's trying to build a case that you won't fight him. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, Lord. You're breaking through all that, showing him how much you love him. Just let your tears go, sir. He's showing you, don't be afraid to cry before God. Oh, David would let those tears go at a drop of a hat. Let your tears go, sir. He's touching you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Keep coming. I break this evil. I break evil. I break curses. I break curses from music. I break curses from weed. I break transfer spirits that came to him through sharing drugs with people, partying with people. I break this spirit now. Go. I break this transfer of witchcraft. Come out of the hands. Come out of the mind. You're trying to give him schizophrenia. I break schizophrenia in Jesus' name. I break losing his mind through weed. Come out right now. You're trying to take his mind through marijuana. Come out right now. I break the sorcerer. I break the divination curse over his mind. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Divination curse. Come out. Come out. Sorcery curse. I break your hold. Fight him, sir. He's telling you not give up weed. It's your friend. He's a liar. It's sorcery, and it gives place to Satan. Come out of there right now. Come out of there, you pharmacia spirit. I command pharmacia to come out. I command every curse that came in through the tattoos. In Jesus' name, the marking and the scarring of his body. Come out for self-glorification. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out. Get on out of there. Get on out of there. Go. Fight him. He's marijuana. He's sorcery. He told you it was just casual weed getting a little buzz. It's sorcery in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Sorcery and divination. You come out in Jesus' name. Blessings to you. Blessings to you in your mind and your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you that you got a call on Hay's life. Lord, he was just like me when football was over for me. Not knowing which way to go, but Lord, it says the steps of a righteous man are ordained by the Lord. And a man never stands on his own righteousness, but he stands on the righteousness of Jesus Christ, the sinless Son of God. Today, me and Hayes stand before you as your children, and we thank you, Lord, that you love us despite of our failures, but you didn't call him to compare himself to the world. You called him to compare yourself, himself to your son, Jesus Christ, because you said your, your goal was to shape and mold us into the image of Jesus Christ, to set us free from sin, to take away the cravings for sin. Lord, I pray that if there's any generational curse in his life, any generational curse of death or rebellion, any witchcraft or murder or rape going back 10 generations on his father's side going back 10 generations on his mother's side lord we apologize for those sins in jesus name 
And I thank you, Jesus, that you became a curse on the tree of Calvary so that Hayes could go free in Jesus' name. Lord, we repent of any fornication. Any fornication, Lord. Everything you got for us sexually is found in the marriage bed. And the fruits will be our heritage, our children, and the gifts from God. Lord, we turn our back on rebellion and sin, Lord. And we know you make a way. You make the way, Lord. I pray you take this burden, this demonic burden that's blinding him, that's blinding his mind to his call. He's even lying to him right now saying he's seeing the moving of God, but he's not supposed to be a part of it. He's not supposed to experience it. He's not supposed to do it. He's, the devil's trying to lie to him and say he's an outsider. He's a newbie. He's non-deserving of the blessings. I declare you a liar, devil, and I know what you're doing, and I know how you operate, and I expose you by the light of Jesus Christ, and he is loved by God, and he is called by God, and you are trying to entrap him in the worldly amusements and the fleshly desires, and I bind your power and loose your hold. I declare you will not steal his life. You will not steal his life as a man of God, as a family man, as an ambassador of the kingdom, a pillar in the community of prayer and leadership. You're a liar. And I command you to let him go. Take two big breaths. I command you to let him go in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out of there. Demons from the world that come in through movies. Demons that come through movies, watching wickedness, watching sex acts, watching sexual stimulation. Come out right now. The partying, the comparing, the fighting. Come out of there right now. Generational curses, spirits that try to take Jeremiah's knees. Come out, you try to take the ACL. Come out. Come out of there right now. Demons have told him not to pray in tongues. Come out right now. Demons tell him, well, I forgot how to do it. That's a lie. There he goes, Hayes. He's coming out. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Guilt and shame, not feeling good enough. Come out of there right now. All the perversions that came in when men seen porn and you showed them nakedness. Come out of everything that transferred through sexual contact. Come out of there right now. The desire to drink, the desire to be great. Come out right now in the name of Jesus, all the pride. Come out right now. I command you to let them go. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Whom the Son of God sets free is set at liberty from the oppressor. I break the generational curses. Come out. The generational curses of all the macho men, all the self-willed men. Come out right now. We are servants of the Lord. We are obedient servants. Come out right now. All that spirit of rebellion. Come out right now. Rebellion. The Bible says the sin of rebellion is as of witchcraft. I bind that rebellion to come out right now in the name of Jesus. I bind all the self-sufficiency and self-dependency. Come out right now, all them lies that said, if you don't do it, it won't get done. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Those demons that told him he was a failure because his knee went out temporarily. You come out right now. The devils that made him feel embarrassed going back to the high school, going back to the father, going back to the hometown because he was set up to be somebody that would play on Sundays, feeling like he's a failure because he didn't. You're a liar. Come out of there. Come out right now. Let him go in Jesus' name. Keep fighting. You got it. Arthritis, knee demons that came from my son, that came through me. Come out of there right now. Every devil that tried to attack Hayes' knees. Come out of there right now. Every spirit that would try to hide in there and make him cripple and make him arthritic. I bind your power and I loose your holds. I command you to come out. Streamers, all you have to do is command them to come out. All you got to do is command them to come out. All you got to do is say no in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Pete's hugging demons out. But you can do it the easier way and just cast them out in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, fight for yourself. Right now, don't go. Everybody listening that's in this place, don't go before you tell them to go. You said stand up for yourself. Don't wait around for someone to come and pray for you. Pray for yourself. Use the authority God gave you. Satan, take your hands off me in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of God. Take your hands off my body. I'm sick of arthritis. I'm sick of back pain. I'm sick of headaches. I'm sick and tired of my immune system not working well. I'm sick and tired of rejection and fear. I'm sick and tired of cursing and being cursed. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, I command you to go. I command you to let me go in the name of Jesus. Anything left in there, we bind you from the organs. We bind you from the spinal cord. I break that portal in which he opened to Satan. I break that portal into his soul that came in through sexual deviance. 
I break that sexual sin demon that came in through bestiology. I break it right now. I break it right now. I break it right now. We renounce it in the name of Jesus. Come out of that man. I bind the strong man in the brain. Come out. Come out of the brain. Anxieties in the mind. Racing thoughts in the mind. Racing thoughts in the mind. Overwhelming senses of failure. Overwhelming senses of fear. Let those gifts go. Loose the woman of God in Jesus' name. Loose and untie. Streamers, I pray for you right now in Jesus' name if you're still watching. Lord, the Holy Ghost is still here and we thank you, Lord. I pray the Holy Spirit, Lord, go touch these streamers. Go touch everybody, Lord, that's watching this later in the week. I pray you would touch him with power. I pray you would touch him with love. I pray you would touch him with mercy. I pray you would set him at liberty right now in the name of Jesus. Streamers, just put your hand wherever you feel nervous or tightness or often feel nervous in that area. Put your hands right there. Satan, I bind your power. I command you to loose your holds. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. I command you to come out of the streamers in the name of Jesus. I command you to stop stealing and pillaging these people by the mighty name of God. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of there. What's going on, brother? Hey, sit right there. Let's pray for you. Come on out in Jesus' name. Don't let your mind get taken. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus, for healing bodies. Sir, what's different from... from Two weeks ago from today, what's what's different? What's going on, bro? I'm going to introduce myself. Hey, man, what's your name? Jesus. My name's Rick. I uh, got uh, I, I came here before the first time. I've never seen the deliverance happen. Blew my mind. Mm. And then I got baptized on Easter. Oh wow! Praise so God. I'm kind, of, kind of new to it, and uh, uh, I've been waiting for sort of a. Uh, I was about to leave right now, and I came back. I felt like I, there's still something I need to hear. So mm. uh, I've been asking for God to, to confirm something that I felt like I felt a passion. I don't know much about deliverance yet. Like, I'm still learning. I don't know where to learn from. I think you mentioned it was funny because you said YouTube. Da, 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 da. I was like, I mean, I, I just don't know. Well, you can learn. I said you can learn about it, but to learn it, you got to go through it. Right. So here, I, I got a good one for you. On that wall, there's there's two Bible studies I want you to get. One is self-deliverance. So that's the second or third sheet. The second one is the wonderful gift of hate. It, hate is a wonderful gift because he says, hate what I hate, but I didn't hate a lot of things that were sinful and offensive to God. I was used to it. I was comfortable with it. I had participated in it for years. So when he gave me that gift, I can see it. I can smell smoke, I can see fire. I know where there's smoke, there's fire, right? So if you can sense where, what God feels and how he feels, you walk a lot more clear. I, I, I walk in this restaurant, they got the best hamburgers, hamburger works right down there. But I gotta park in the back and I walk through the bar sometimes on Saturdays and it's all these old timers just drinking their life away. I can feel the oppression that that devil's in there stealing their lives. I can sense it. Why? Because I chose to hate what God hates. I hate when people's lives are stolen. I hate when they're just drinking away their sorrows in a bottle and days are turning into months, into years, into decades, and at the end there's going to be a day of judgment. So since I hate what I hate, I can feel it. I can sense it. It'll help you tremendously. And then just keep, keep coming here when you have time. And you, don't, you can watch it online. You just, you'll just start seeing it. You'll sense it. Hey, it wasn't until about three months into deliverance that I realized, man, I had a whole bunch of offenses towards people. They weren't big offenses, but man, I had mounted them up over the years and I had never apologized for it. So what happened was I was hearing the word of God and we were going to different levels, peeling off layers. I thought, hey, I was done with pride, but my version of pride and God's version of pride were two different things. 
All right, well, Heavenly Father, I pray for my brother Jesus in the name of Jesus. I thank you for that salvation. I thank you for that baptism, Lord. He laid down in that water on his own free will. That's the symbology of his old life, laying down and not coming back up. And the new man came up out of the water. And I thank you that, Lord, every gift is in his spirit, man. I thank you for every gift that you gave him to walk strategically to walk with vision, to walk with discernment, to walk with love, to walk with the ability to know your will. Thank you that you're helping him in his Bible study. Thank you for the spirit of truth upon him. Thank you for this wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming back. Self-deliverance and gift of hate. Yeah, just take a left and it'll be right along the wall. There's about, you know, little pamphlets. It's a one-page paper, actually. One last thing. Okay. I uh, also needed, I, I, I've been looking for confirmation because uh, there was this, I don't know if it was from myself or if it was from God. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to get. What was it? Confirmation. It was, uh, it was a vision of me learning deliverance. And, and there's a church called Rock Point right by, in Queen Creek. That's where I live. And that I start something there. Well, amen. Will you think the devil well. would give you that one? No, no, no. But I, mean, I, don't, know, but I don't know. Oh, here's how it starts. That's why that self-deliverance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the most deliverance I got wasn't in the sanctuary. It was by myself because I was spending time with Jesus. And then what will happen is when you're ready, you see that guy right there with the bald head? I was working with him for a while about four years ago, and he said, well, how do I know when I'm ready? I said, you'll know you're, when you're ready because God will send somebody to you. And a guy literally chased him down on his motorcycle for three miles. He tried to outrun him. Thought it was somebody coming for him from back in the day. Got off his bike, squared up, and the guy said, man, God told me you could help me to follow you. And he got him delivered that day. So you work on yourself. The harvest is ripe. The laborers are few. You just got to get yourself ready. And you got to learn some things, trial and error, you know, as far as learning if I got any spirits, learning the word of God, being able to challenge anything in my body, being able to press through. Well, if I don't have fear, then I should do what God told me to do and go do this, you know, something loving, something merciful or something giving to someone, right? And then everything, remember, always it starts small. So, yeah, the end goal is, is bringing it to your church, having a small group, getting four or five, six people delivered, right? But the reality is we got to work on ourselves, and then God, will, when we're ready, he'll send us one. It'll be the highways and the byways, right? You can come here. Keep learning. I'll help you to cast out demons right here, and you can shadow me. But just get those, those scriptures in. Give yourself grace and say, Lord, I'm just pliable here. Shape and mold me. I want to be ready for every, every work and every job you called me to do and have. I appreciate it. Hey, looking forward to seeing you around. All right. Thank you. What's going on now? We, we, what's happened since that Saturday you came and got that wonderful touch at the, at the teaching, training? He got a wonderful touch. What happened since then? Good? Stagnant? He was casting out of himself or you? Oh, he's casting out of himself. You're giving the spirits a hard time? Oh, okay. It's going to go away. What's the affliction? What is it? It's just I'm really unsteady walking. You're un that's your only problem now? You got rid of all the bitterness, resentment, and all that stuff? And fighting and quarreling? Bitterness that creeps up, and I try to get it out of me, too. That's okay, what have you been bitter about? I, I don't know. Are you bitter at God because you want this thing done with and you want to have your body working in accordance to his no. design? And No? no you don't know what it's from? It's just I get upset. Her, so easily, I, guess. I don't know why. Well, if I was the enemy and I knew the scriptures that it says if you're quarreling with your wife, your prayers get hindered, well, the first thing I'd try to do is get you fighting with your wife, Right? And you don't know why you're, if I was the devil, because <laughs> he said, if you're, if you're, the Bible says, if you're quarreling with your wife, your prayers are hindered. That means they're not getting to heaven. I think that devil's been fighting, is doing that, and it's been doing it all day, and it's got me on in a bad way all day, because I'm having a hard time maneuvering. Well, okay, that's two different things, so you got to begin to take one thing at a time. 
well, yeah, if you're, if you're fighting with your wife and you have these, these health issues, that's two separate things. And they're all getting mixed together. How would you keep them unmixed? Well, first thing I would do is make it up in my mind that I will not fight my wife. Oh, I got it in my mind I will not fight her, but sometimes my mind forgets all that I got it in my mind. And next thing I know... Well, well here's what you got to do is you got to get up and remind yourself every morning. It's called your first first crack of dawn prayer and you say Lord you you promise that you would supply all my needs according to your glorious riches which are in heaven I know that I received power when the Holy Spirit came upon me you've proved it you've delivered me and you've helped me but Lord I'm having a problem getting along with my wife we got a lot of laundry of bad things that were said to each other things I did in my life previously before I was married to her and it causes some friction so, Lord, I want you to disarm this enemy. I want to be able to walk in grace and love. I need to love my wife as Christ loved the church. I need to take care of her like the weaker vessel. So I'm not looking for her to take care of me. I'm looking to take care of her. So, Lord, I'm preparing myself with this attitude today. I'm not going to trust in my own human ability. I'm going to trust in the power that you give me. So thank you that you wrote your word on my heart and my mind. And so when I'm challenged, I will not be confused. I know the enemy is going to try to get me to do the same thing I did last week, which was fighting with my wife, so I stay sick. I'm refusing to be sick, and so I'm refusing to fight with my wife. You don't want me to fight with my wife. We can't pray good. Me and my wife can't go out and fulfill our call ministering to people. We, we, we we're over here constantly looking for help. We need to be able to help some people that are looking for help. So, Lord, I'm going to choose to do the right thing. I've tried to do it on my own self and my own ability, and I've forgotten sometimes. I've lost my control. So now I'm going to surrender to you, Lord. I'm going to surrender my actions and my attitudes and my tongues right now in Jesus' name. I forgive my wife for everything she said. I forgive all the past, and I tear up the IOUs, and I tear up the vengeance, and I tear up the pride that tells me not to overlook it and not to be merciful. I've been acting out of my own flesh, Lord, and I do want to be healed in my body. I'm desperate to be healed in my body. I don't want to get sick and die, and I know you don't want me to get sick and die because I'm living in here, so that proves you want me well. So, Lord Jesus, forgive me of fighting with my wife. My prayers must be heard every day. My prayers must be answered for my healing. My prayers must be answered for loving my wife. I thank you for the spirit of truth coming in my mind. Lord, I can't cast out a bad habit that I don't want to change. I can't cast out bad behavior. I got to cast out demons once I've repented of my bad behavior. I repent right now in Jesus' name. If anything came back in there, I bind your power in Jesus' name. This can't keep going on. They've had too much deliverance. They've been here too many times to keep destroying them. I bind this devil that's taken his mind and his cognitive function in Jesus' name. I bind all those devils that came in through all those years of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I bind your power, and I'm commanding you to let him go. You're lying to him now and telling him he's not getting healed. You're lying to him now and telling him fighting with your wife is what she deserves. You're a liar, devil, in Jesus' name. I command you to let him go. Get him moving. Get him moving. Come out. Stop stalling in there, you emphysema. Stop stalling in there, asthma. Come out of there right now, the spirit of death. Come out of there, the spirit of death and tremors. Come out of there right now. Fight them now. You fight them. Shake my hand. What's going on with you, bro? Good day for you. What's happening? I'm doing excellent. Yes, excellent. I was telling them that you're like my celebrity. And the reason why I'm Well, that's some funny stuff. That's some funny stuff. What happened was 2020, it came across, you know, everybody shut down. I came across you online, and then I hardcore, and then I started studying. Mm. So what happened was I got in, in, you know, involved with this ministry, and then my daughter, she grabbed.